Welcome everyone to Green Drinks. My name is Ginevra. I am the program coordinator at Sustainable Woodstock. We're based in Woodstock, cover the Upper Valley, and we are hosting this event tonight. I'm trying to admit you all while I talk. Um, we are a nonprofit organization founded in 2009. Our mission is to inspire, educate, and empower everyone to live environmentally, economically, and socially responsible lives. So you have come to one of our Green Drinks events. These are social events to connect people who have similar interests in the environment. We invite local nonprofits, businesses, individuals to make short presentations to highlight sustainability initiatives that are happening in our area. So that happens every month, third Thursday, typically, and that's what you've come to tonight. So our next green drinks, I'll just do a quick plug, is going to be February 17th and is on how Efficiency Vermont, Vermont, excuse me, can help small businesses. So we're going to be joined by Becca White from Efficiency Vermont to learn how Efficiency Vermont can connect local businesses to resources and help them save energy and money and what incentives are available to help them get started. So we're doing that, especially now, because for a limited time, Efficiency Vermont is conducting free energy consultations with businesses and business owners in Woodstock and the general surrounding area. So we're really excited to have Efficiency Vermont partnering with us and to feature them in the next Green Drinks. Today, we're going to hear from Ham Gillett, and he gave me a lovely bio here. Ham has had his hands in solid waste, recycling, and composting for the past 30 years. He helped start Woodstock, Vermont, recycling and refuse, educating the public during a new townwide recycling mandate, running the office, selling compost, and occasionally driving a trash route. For DSM Environmental Services, he performed some disgusting trash sorts from DC to Dayton to the South Bronx. He was also the office manager. Ham has held his current position for the past six years, working with residents, businesses, and schools to understand and comply with Vermont Act 148, the Universal Recycling Law. He is a certified master composter and a founding member of PUTRID, Putrid, People Uncovering Trash Rotting in Dumpsters. All right, I think that's, um, that is everything from me. So you're all, you're all set, Ham. Feel free, take it away. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. As you can see, it is still Christmas in Windsor. And um, I'm told that you're supposed to have an interesting background. So I thought it's better than a white curtain. Um, gosh, you have a lot of people on here. I, uh, Ginevra, this goes till, uh, 6 30 is that right we're here all night no yeah it goes 5 30 to 6 30 all right ideally so, <laughs> yeah so i i much prefer to take questions than to uh well i like to talk but i this is primarily for me it's a way to hear your questions and your frustrations um so i i'm i will talk a little bit but uh, if anything I say prompts you to think of something else you want to talk about or ask, um, please jot it down. Um, I think we're sending questions to the chat. Is that right? Yes, please put them okay. in the chat. Okay. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Well, we just finished Christmas. And um, I'm just going to run over a few things that I sent out uh, about Christmas. Just... Uh, Primarily two things that I got a lot of emails about. One is Christmas trees, what do I do with them? And one is dead Christmas lights, what do I do with them? Christmas trees, um, probably pretty much everybody on this call knows that um, if you have a live one, you can put it in your uh, backyard for birds. You can um, put it in the woods. You can cut it up, put the branches on your perennials in your garden. Um, any sorts of things that are great for, for winter cover for birds and other kind of creatures. I looked out the window the other day and um, there was a, a Christmas tree in my backyard. And I thought, well, that's great. Somebody who I offended by my Norwich Lister posting has driven to, Nor found out where I live, driven to Norwich and put their 
this was tree in my backyard. I think I finally figured it out. I think my neighbor put it out and it blew over, but it's great. Now I have, I'm gonna have two Christmas trees um, that I can do stuff with. The other is um, Christmas lights, the Lebanon landfill, Lebanon Solid Waste District will take uh, dead Christmas lights and they get stripped down and the wiring is recycled. I don't think the lights and the actual plastic is, but, um, and that leads me to my other, uh, my other point about, uh, there's been sort of a, you probably all may all be aware, aware of this, but the Lebanon landfill as of September 1st uh, required, requires everyone to have a windshield permit or a uh, permit on their phone to get into the facility. That's caused a lot of consternation. Um, they, when they actually started counting the people who weren't from Lebanon or weren't supposed to be using the landfill, um, they were kind of shocked. So um, if you want to use Lebanon so, and you haven't, you need to use Lebanon and you haven't uh, got a sticker, uh, you go to their website, which I put, uh, I sent to Ginevra, so that'll show up at the end, but it's basically if you Google Lebanon transfer station or Lebanon landfill, you'll get what you need and you will get a permit. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. And then you will be able to go and use their facility. Um, I'm finding that the Hartford transfer station is uh, beginning to take fewer things also leading to some frustration for those of you who might use it. Um, they do not and have not taken any construction debris for the last two years and Lebanon does. So that's um, something good to know if you're in the contracting business or even if you're doing a do it, do it yourself job. Okay, um, another question that I get a lot of times is what is, what is recyclable or what do I do with this number two, something or other. Um, and I always tell people what you can, re if, if you take your materials to a, a transfer station, a recycling facility or uh, a fast trash Saturday drop off, um, whoever picks up your recyclables, and takes them someplace, that is dictated. Uh, that dictates what you can recycle. In other words, people who live in West Fairley get picked up, uh, they have a Saturday drop off. Their hauler is, it happens to be based in New Hampshire, but he takes his recycling to a different place than where Thetford or Norwich or Stratford or uh, Able Waste in Woodstock or Heartland take theirs. So I'm always going to ask you if you ask me about a certain material, I'm going to say, what town do you live in? And then I can tell you where your recyclables are going to end up and be processed. And that dictates what you are able to recycle. It's not the same statewide. The only thing that is the same statewide is this: is the recyclables that are listed in the universal recycling law. And I call those the statewide six. And in terms of plastic, uh, that is ones and twos. Some facilities will take fives, if you gotta ask and some facilities will take fours, but you gotta ask. Uh, but the state requires everyone to recycle their ones and twos along with tin cans, aluminum, paper, cardboard, glass, et cetera. I'm sure I'm leaving something out. A um, Lot of questions about, I, I hope somebody's gonna ask me about composting I'm, uh, and food scraps, we got a ton of, questions last year after it had first been uh, set into law. And I'd be interested to hear how those of you who are composting or sorting food scraps, um, I hope you're all doing that, uh, where what you're doing with it and what problems you're having. Um, the biggest issue I always hear about is bears. And I have a couple of suggestions for that. Um, a new website. I have this really cool, uh, she was an intern, but she goes to Plymouth State. 
Her name is Kennedy, and she has redone my website for me. And the, we have a new URL, which I'm also going to be posting at the end, but it is G U V S W M D dot org. There used to be no M in there, but now there is. So G U V S W M D dot org. Um, and she's created a really cool, when you, if you're looking to if something, if you want to find out what to do with something, we have an A to Z guide. And uh, Kennedy created this thing where you just, uh, think you just type in like the first couple letters of the item and boom, it'll come up on the list. You have to, you used to have to scroll down alphabetically. So pretty pleased about that. Uh, hazardous waste collection events. We have actually scheduled them for 2022. The first one is going to, they're both hopefully, fingers crossed, going to be uh, at the Hartford Transfer Station. The first is going to be on Saturday, July 9th from, uh, oh gosh, I don't know, uh, nine to one. And the second one is going to be on Tuesday, September 13th, also at Hartford from, I think it's 1.30 to 5.30. We have to run them for four hours, but I will be posting that uh, long before the events happen. So just wanna let you know about that. There's also one for those of you who live in Vershire or West Fairley, we are invited, you are invited to use the uh, hazardous waste event in at the Bradford Town Garage because you are uh, so far north in our district and I don't have a date for them yet, but you'll hear about it. Talking about hazardous waste, we've been getting all sorts of warnings from our contractors who uh, run these events saying that the, uh, the cost is going to go up a minimum of 15%. We are now paying uh, this past year uh, for a four hour event, we paid, uh, 29,000 for one and 32,000 for the other. Um, just to set up costs close to $10,000 just for the crew to come and set up. And that doesn't include disposal of any of these things. And be, they have to take, they pick up all the stuff in Hartford and then they ship it all over the country to whoever will take a certain material. So some goes to North Carolina, some goes to Ohio, um, I had a, a acquaintance from uh, South Stratford who called me last year and he had his, uh, found a vial of his father's liquid mercury and um, 500 bucks because it has to go in a 500, it has to go in a 55 gallon drum. If that's the only thing that goes in there, it has to be packed. Uh, so I tell you this because, and again, I think that a lot of you on this call are probably already very um, environmentally aware, sustainably aware, but I tell you this um, because every time you go into a hardware store or a feed supply store, more hard, I'm gonna say hardware store, and you reach for that bottle, that can of wasp spray, or you wanna get rid of the grubs in your lawn and you buy um, weed killer or herbicides or pesticides, that's all stuff that ends up when you don't use it, uh, it ends up being brought to one of these collections and the, the costs are astronomical and they're only gonna keep going higher and higher and the state has less and less money to reimburse us. So. Um, this is statewide. It was just a meeting today with all the, the solid waste industry managers about what are we going to do? How are we going to pay for these events? So I uh, ask with you, ask you, plead with you, please consider alternative uh, materials for, when, for your yard and your home um, and spread that word to um, your friends and neighbors. Um, Batteries and bulbs. People can ask me about that. I'm not gonna go on about that, but if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, electronics, I'm happy to answer those questions. Um, I do wanna say something about uh, regarding electronics. 
what is, uh, according to the state, what is a covered electronic versus what is a non-covered electronic. The state requires every transfer station and recycling facility in the state to collect televisions, computers, computer peripherals, that includes desktop printers, um, that includes you know, keyboards, mice, cables, laptops, iPads, everything. Um, they are required to collect those for no cost. You may, depending on where you take those materials, you may have to pay to get into the facility or have a sticker on your car, but the disposal of those materials are free. Everything else, your telephones, a floor printer, um, fax machines, those sort of things, um, those are considered non-covered by the state and you may or may not be asked to pay something to dispose of those. Now, if you take them to Hartford, for instance, they will take all of the, all your electronics, but they may, may charge you for any non-covered item. Uh, toaster ovens, um, toasters, old stereos, that sort of thing. So um, again, I can ask questions, I can answer questions if you have more at the end. Um, you've probably been hearing about um, something called extended producer responsibility. And that is in the legislature being discussed right now. Um, but this is happening, uh, it's already happening in Europe. It's happening in more and more states in the country. We are trying to make it mandatory that the whoever manufactures a product has to pay the cost of its end of life because all of us towns, solid waste districts are paying enormous amounts of money to send this stuff to the landfill. Um, paint care, uh, call to recycle, paint care is paint, call to recycle is batteries and cell phones um, and bulb, fluorescent bulbs. Those are three products that in this state um, we have and we have basically have extended producer responsibility. If you want to sell electronics in this state, you have to pay uh, a large amount of money, which covers the cost of those being recycled. Uh, if you buy a gallon of paint in this state, you pay 99 cents on top of the regular price that pays for the paint care program and um, bulbs, fluorescent bulbs, CFL bulbs are different, you don't have to, uh, I, I don't know whether you pay extra for those or not, but those are the three materials that already we are, we are charged, we are making the, the, the producer, the manufacturer cover the cost. Um, it's happening with packaging, all kinds of packaging. Uh, it, so if you hear that e EPR, extended producer responsibility, that's what that's about. Happy to answer questions about that. Um, I just found, um, just read this the other day in 20, in 20, this was, I think there's an article in Vermont, uh, in VT Digger. Um, in 2020, last two years ago, Vermont sent 74,000 tons of household waste and 17,000 tons of construction debris to facilities outside of Vermont, New Hampshire and New York. So, it's big. And um, I just am every chance I get trying to make people aware of how much we throw away and try not to um, buy it in the first place, recycle it if you can. And I'm going to say one more thing, and I say it every time I get to open my mouth is when you, um, well, two things. One is when you throw something away, where is away? When you throw it in your trash can, where is it going to go? And the second one is when in doubt, throw it out. And this is particularly uh, regarding recyclables. If you have any question whether something is recyclable or not, throw it in the trash. You can call me or email me, but if I can't give you an answer, 
throw it in the trash. Because if you throw it in with your single stream recyclables, it contaminates the entire load of recyclables. And that's why China shut us off three years ago and said, we're not taking your plastics anymore because you're putting all this other, pardon my French, crap in with it. So um, stick to uh, what you know is recyclable and, um, and go from there. And I keep saying we've got one more thing because one thing reminds me of another. Uh, in this, this coming year, there are going to be more polystyrene styrofoam collections. We're working on it. There are gonna be two in Lebanon, one in Hanover. Um, again, that is not recyclable and no kind of peanuts or polystyrene, anything with a number six on it uh, that looks like styrofoam is not recyclable in your single stream. And all of it's going to the landfill at the moment. So we are trying to pull that out of the waste stream and find ways to collect it. And we ship it to right now to a facility down in Palmer, Massachusetts which um, crushes it and extrudes it and makes it into more blocks of styrofoam. Styrofoam is 98% air. So I'm done talking, fire away. Yeah, well, we've got a lot of questions coming in. <laughs> Good. Oh, that should be easy. <clears throat> Hi, Michael. Do you want to just take turn no. doing questions? Sure. Hi, Michael. Hi, Ham. Great talk. <laughs> I like your Christmas tree. It's still in your house. <laughs> those lights, I want you to know, those lights were purchased at the Vermont workshop in Woodstock, which is, no, which is where uh, Zach's place is now. It used oh, yeah. to be Nancy Wickham Boyd's. And they were purchased in 1965 by my wow. parents and they were on my tree every year. And my father always thought they were gonna burn the house down. Um, I shouldn't have them on, they're not LED, but I only turn them on once in a while. And they're candles. I mean, they're, they're bulbs that look like candles and I can't, bear to, um, I can't bear to get rid of them. So they come out once a year. That's my contribution to carbon footprint. Okay, sorry. Very, very cool. Um, very cool looking. Well, what do you, I'll, I'll go first, Michael. How about sure. I just scrolled all the way back up to the top. <laughs> um, all righty. Ham, should we all be tearing the plastic windows out of business envelopes and pasta boxes before recycling them? No. If you do, um, that will make it easier for the sorting uh, machine. But that's all done. It used to the old days, you used to have to do that. Um, you do not now. I, I do, I take them out of my pasta boxes, not out of my envelopes. Um, you do not have to do that. If you want to and have nothing else to do, go ahead. It makes it easier on the machines, but you don't have to. Next question, Ham. Thanks. Uh, what happens to glass bottles collected via the bottle bill in Vermont? Are they actually recycled? As far as I know, yes. They are. That's that's all. I, <laughs> so I don't know much about them, but yes, um, yeah. they they are. I will say that some non-returnable glass uh, is not. It was a period where it was not being recycled. Hmm. It's um, it's very very heavy to transport and not worth very much money, oh. and so. Some of it has been being landfilled. It's also now being, uh, a lot of places are, are grinding it and using it for road beds and yeah. help to sidewalks, but that, yeah. Great, thank you. Where, where and when can we recycle small electronics like phones and radios? You already went over it a little bit, but just a summary. Um, if your town has a, we're, we're the GUV, the, the district will be holding again this year, um, several Saturday collection events where we collect things that you can't recycle or put in the trash. Uh, electronics is one of those. If you, um, I will also be posting those. Um, you can bring those to one of our events. You can also take them to the Hartford transfer station. 
again, you need either a sticker for that facility, which you get from your town office and you pay for, or if it's a one-time shot and you don't want to get a permit, they'll charge you $10 for a day pass. Um, I hope that answers your question. And some things like toasters and toaster ovens end up going into um, metal recycling, actually, because they're if anything is 75, anything that's 75% metal, at least 75% metal, usually will go uh, in metal recycling. Great, thank you. Um, and I'll, I'll mention that Sustainable Woodstock does an electronics recycling day in mid-October. It'll be probably the third Saturday. Still needs to be confirmed the exact date, but we will put um, lots of publicity out about that and we work with the HAM on that event. So. Thank Just you. Keep I an eye out for that. that. <clears throat> so next question, Ham, is are the cardboard containers that cream, i.e. half and half, et cetera, come in recyclable? No, they're not. They um, they used to be coated in plastic in, in wax. They're now all those things, juice, cream, um, eggnog, those are all coated in plastic and they're not recyclable. Uh, as far as I know. Um, I, I've been on recently on Casella's website, and I do not <laughs> believe um, that they are recyclable. Thank you. A composting question. What should you use for brown in the winter? And if you're not burying the compost, but using a composter, how do you keep the bears from destroying the composter? <laughs> I knew I knew we'd get one. Um, Browns in the winter. Um, here's what I do. I rake up my leaves and I run them through a uh, leaf shredder chopper, which I got at the landfill. Somebody was throwing it away. And I fill a large trash can with shredded leaves um, and cover it. And every time I put some food scraps in, I put some leaves in. So that's, that is, uh, the easiest thing to do if you have space to um, to even if you even if you can't shred them up, you can you know mow 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 over them. If you have some place where you can put them in a pile or in a container, I have I actually have a fifty five gallon drum that I that I put them in. Um, that's the best thing to do. Or store them in your garage, put a tarp over them, whatever. Um, other than that. Uh, wood chips, wood shavings, um, shredded paper is fine. You know, if you uh, if you have a paper shredder, you can put your shredded paper in your compost. It's not going to break down in the winter, um, but once it warms up again, it serves as a good um, as a good brown material. Thank you. So I have a comment and a question. Um, Someone mentions that um, they have heard that goat farms really like Christmas trees. Uh, yes, thank you for that. Um, some do, some don't. There's a goat farm in Windsor and I called uh, them just before Christmas and the guy was very nice, but he said, no, thank you. Um, it is tough on the digestion mm -hmm. uh, for uh, the goat's <clears throat> digestive system and I thought that's why goats love them because it didn't matter what they ate. When I was a kid you could I was you were supposed to be able to feed them tin cans. But um I, I think it depends on it de and then I and then I heard from two other people who said yeah I my neighbor has a goat and I gave them a Christmas tree and they're very happy. So um at, at, call and ask and and um you'll get you might get a yes and you might get a no. Great thank you. The question was, is there any way to recycle CDs or DVDs in the Upper Valley? No. Um, the Listen Center and I think the cover store will take, they're selective, but I think that they will take CDs and DVDs. Again, call and ask, don't show up with a carload full of them and, and get turned away. Um, there's a place called, um, if you Google, it's called Green Disc, G-R-E-E-N-D-I-S-K. 
They're based in Michigan, Wisconsin. Um, they take them, they charge, um, you have to pay for the shipping. Uh, there's also a really cool place up in Barrie uh, and it's run by the Central Vermont Solid Waste District. It's called the ARC, the Additional Recyclables Collection Center. I uh, beg you to Google them. They take all sorts of things that we can't recycle. I just drove up, I have friends who live near uh, in Middlesex and I was driving up to see them and I stopped at the ARC and I took 75 VHS tapes that I'd collected from friends and uh, they're all being recycled in the cases. Um, so I think I'm, I'm pretty sure, I know for a fact that the ARC will take DVDs and CDs um, again, go on their website and they, they charge like 30 cents a piece for VHS, I think. But, you know, if it, it, it's great to keep them out of the landfill, they're full, you know, they're made with all sorts of toxic materials. So um, the ARC, A-R-C-C or Additional Recycling, Additional Recyclables Collection Center. Thank you, Ham. I brought a lot of old textbooks there. Um, great place. So our next one is uh, a comment and a question. Uh, it's so frustrating to walk by bulging dumpsters and see them full of plastic bags and food. Despite years of urging, it seems like a lot of folks are utterly clueless about what goes into our recycling bins and what doesn't. What can our towns or our energy committees do to turn this around? Whew. That's a good question. Uh, so plastic, um, say the beginning of that one again, plastic, plastic film. Uh, dumpsters like, with plastic bags and food. Yeah. Um, that, that's a really tough one when the, before the law passed, um, one of our jobs, one of my colleagues and my jobs were to travel all over and talk to every restaurant and every food generator and make sure that they were online doing it. Um, there are always going to be a number of people who don't do it for whatever reason. There are people who are um, can't do it, physically can't do it. Uh, and then there are people who just, I had one woman tell me last year that it, it was government overreach. And um, so there's, you know, there's a certain, sector people who um, they're just they're just not they're just not they're not going to do it um, in terms to answer your question I think it's just you have to keep hammering away at it um, energy commissions you you um, you need to put signage out uh, you need to do one of these events um, you know it's been going on for a year and a half now and I think it's time for sort of a re um, recalibration from the state and from all of us, uh, you know, the low hanging fruit, the people who do it because they thought it was the right thing or do it because it's the law, those people are all doing it. Um, and we just, we just need to sort of knock on, not literally knock on people's doors, but um, you, you have, to, have to keep at it. And if you see it and you feel comfortable saying it to somebody in a non-judgmental, non-confrontational way, just say, uh, hey, did you know about the law? Or I'm curious why you're, um, you know, why you're, why you're not, why you're not doing it, and be open for any answer that you may get. Um, not a great, that's not a great answer, but I think we need more help from the state. And um, if you want uh, assistance or backup from the Solid Waste District, please let me know. I'm happy to work with you on ways that we can. Uh, keep getting the word out. Great, thank you, Ann. Mm. Another, again, a, a, sorry, of a comment and then another question. Uh, Somebody is mentioning that the Lebanon landfill was also accepting Christmas trees for composting. Um, and the question is, is there anywhere, and thank you for pointing that out, is there anywhere locally to recycle the clamshell containers from the Hanover Co-op since Lebanon does not recycle them? Uh, I'm assuming this is the 
These are the plastic clamshells. Um, Doesn't say, but I would imagine. Okay, no. Um, number, first of all, um, black plastic of any kind is not recyclable at, at the moment um, for two reasons, which I understand. One is that the scanner in the sorting facility can't pick it up because it's black against a black conveyor belt. So the scanner doesn't see it. Uh, the second is that uh, black plastic can only be made into more black plastic. And so if you're collecting all different colors of plastic and you get black in there, black's going to mess up whatever you're going to, you know, whatever you're going to turn that plastic into. So um, that's one answer about the clamshells. As far as I know, um, there is no place to recycle those at this time. And what about the ones that are all clear rather than having a black bottom on them? Those are, uh, I think those are, if they say PET number one, they have the circle, you know, the, the recycling triangle on the bottom and they say PET, those can go with um, your number one. In, yeah, those can go with your number one plastics. Okay. Somebody relatedly says, Sarah says, I read, uh, uh, you reuse clamshells. Oh, it's Leanne to Sarah. Uh, I reuse clamshells for holding my compost until it goes out to the pile. Um, yeah, and then she says, we'll see what Ham says, but I think you can put them in Casella's zero sort recycling. So, um, yeah, you, there are lots of ways that, you know, you can plant your seedlings in them um, yeah. this spring. Um, I go to a fa big family Thanksgiving every year and um, we use them for, um, you know, leftovers. Everybody takes home leftovers in them. So um, yeah, that's a tough one. All right, thank you. Uh, next question. Our food scrap bin is disgusting. I suppose we must take turns cleaning it weekly. <laughs> <laughs> that's up to you. <laughs> weekly, daily. Depends on how many people are in the household. Um, yes, yeah, I'm assuming this is the food scrap pail that's going out to the compost. Um, I would assume so. Yeah, uh, yeah, they get disgusting, um, particularly in the summer. If you put um, coffee grounds on top, if you drink coffee, put your coffee grounds on top of it, or um, I know a couple of people who use, um, have a little bucket of sawdust under their sink and they just take a handful and sprinkle it on the top. That helps because that's all what's happening in your bucket in your kitchen it is starting to anaerobically digest and uh, it stinks because it's breaking down, but um, you need to get it out of your house obviously and into your compost pile where you're gonna put some brown carbon materials in with it. And that's going to make the microbes happy. Uh, so, Ham, thank you. The next question is from uh, Philip, uh, Sustainable Lebanon. Ask limited, uh, li he says, Lebanon accepts limited plastic. I've been taking other plastic to the zero sort bins at the White River Junction co op, but I wonder if that's a good idea. Don't know where it's going. Any other suggestions? Landfill? Uh, my guess is that if Lebanon isn't taking them, that they're probably not recyclable in this area. And I would not take them to the White River Co-op unless you're absolutely sure that what you're putting in there is recyclable. Otherwise, you're just driving it to the co-op and contaminating their recyclables. So um, I, that's a uh, happy to talk about that one more if you want to email me or or call me. That's my guess. Thank you. Great, thank you. Can you throw meat and bones in the garbage? Uh, 
By garbage, I'm assuming they mean the trash. I assume. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the initial law was that you had to recycle your food scraps, your meat scraps and bones. Uh, the state quickly got a lot of pushback about that. So if you were backyard composting, your composter will never get hot enough to break down uh, the pathogens in meat and bones. It also, um, I'm just reminded as I'm talking that somebody asked a question about bears. Ginevra, remind me to go back. Um, yeah, if you're composting in the backyard, you can't put your, your meat scraps in bones. Uh, if, you're, if you're taking your food scraps to a transfer station, like in Norwich or Thetford, or I don't think Stratford, uh, no, I take that back. Norwich only. Casella picks up the food scraps at the Norwich transfer station and they're going to a commercial composting facility with a huge giant windrow, steaming windrows. Hmm. You can put your meat scraps and bones if you're, if where you're taking them, dropping them off, uh, they're being taken to a commercial facility. Thetford's goes to a farmer. Farmer doesn't want that. Uh, Stratford, I think, also. Um, so, yes, you may put your meat scraps and your bones in your trash. And I'll bring you back to bears, actually, because the next question is also related to that. I'll just read it, Michael. Um, mm -hmm. This person's agreeing about the food scrap issue. I live in a New Hampshire village, would like to compost food scraps, but I have an ongoing serious problem annually with skunks in my backyard where I would compost, even if I used a plastic composting tumbler, wouldn't recycling my food scraps outdoors be more likely to draw additional skunks or other critters? So we have skunks and bears. Lucky you. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so first of all, my guru recycled, my composting guru, Kat Buxton says, if you do it well, it doesn't smell. So, uh, Black bears can smell black oil sunflower seed from a mile away. Once they smell that in your yard in your bird feeder, they know where to find food. They may not initially be headed to your composter, but if they come for this, the bird seed and sniff around and see that you've got some another food source, there you go. Um, you should never look, if you're backyard composting, you should never look in your pile and see, you should never be able to see any food. You should always cover it with brown material when you throw stuff in there or dig your, you know, dig, a, a, dig down and make a sort of a nest and uh, pull the brown stuff away and then put your food scraps in and cover them back up. And that will help with the, the, the smaller critters, the skunks and such. Um, bears are a huge problem. Um, I've heard people put um, ammonia on a rag put, or put some, pour that on their composter. Uh, excuse me, some people will um, put a strand of electric fence, solar powered electric, one string of electric fence around their composter and or their beehives. You bait the wire with um, a little peanut butter and the bear will go for it and get zapped. Won't get hurt, but it'll get zapped and it won't come back. Um, do not, if you, if it's at all possible, do not just have a pile of food scraps in the woods. That's feeding, that's inviting wild animals uh, to make a connection between you, humans and food. You're also feeding them things that they wouldn't naturally eat. And it's a, it's a bad situation all around. I'm sure there are those of you on the call who are doing that, throwing stuff in the woods. I'm probably not gonna stop you, but it's not a great idea. Thank you. So the next, uh, there's a couple of related questions, uh, comments here. Somebody says that Casella does take clean clamshells. Um, okay. What, and the question is, what about plastic film bags that are used for padding packages? 
and somebody says you can take them to the UPS store and they'll reuse them. And someone else says it no longer, oh, okay, no, that's a different one. <laughs> uh, the Hanover True Value loves clean packing peanuts. Um, I don't know of any other shipping place that will take them. I take, I save mine and take them to a friend who um, is a large maple syrup producer mm. in South Woodstock. And um, if you know somebody who's shipping syrup, they also usually love peanuts as long as they're clean. Um, in terms of the, um, I, you know, as far as Casella and the clamshells, that's great. Um, if, if that's the case, I would go on their website and uh, just, they have a list of everything they take and things that they don't take. Check that out. That's the source. Most of your recyclables that you put out are gonna end up at the materials recovery facility in Rutland or the MRF, and that's owned and run by Casella. So that's their final destination. Uh, I'd be happy to talk about that more too if somebody wants to email me or call me. Um, Michael, what was the other part of that question? They were clamshells. Yeah, the question um, was, um, what about no longer usable plastic bags? Who takes them and where do they go and what do okay. they become? Okay, uh, please do not put them in your single stream recycling. They, they clog up the machinery in the material recovery facility and they have to stop the machines and pull them out. Um, take them to your local uh, grocery store. A lot of the, your stores have a big container out front that will take um, the, the actual bag that you carry your food out in and also uh, produce bags. Make sure they're clean and make sure they're dry. Thank you. And I just wanted to make sure, did we address the, um, the, oh gosh. Oh, the plastic film bags that are used for padding packages? Um, uh, uh, if they're, uh, those, those can also go with your plastic film, your plastic bags, um, but I don't believe that they that they want uh, the bubble wrap because those have um, I don't know how their the bubbles are made, but um, if like you the packing pillows, if that's what you're talking about, pop them. They can go in with plastic film. Um, if you want to find out about um, what the store will take, you know, go in and ask somebody or find out where their plastic bags are going. There are two companies, one's called Trex, T-R-E-X, and the other one is called, somebody help me out, begins with a T also. Um, anyway, Google Trex, T-R-E-X, and find out what they, what they accept. Again, that's your, that's the end use. So find out what they accept and work backwards find out what the store will take. That wasn't a very good answer, but um, call me if you need more information. Um, and I'll read out the next comment since I sort of piggyback there. Um, the Hanover UPS store at Ace Hardware will not take any of the plastic packaging for reuse except styrofoam peanuts. You may have different results asking at different UPS stores. That's a comment. Yeah. And then Hanover takes them, someone says. Um, Okay, so uh, another question. Oh, uh, I just want to add on to that. I know that the town of Thetford, the Thetford Transfer Station collects a lot of plastic film in huge bags and somebody in Thetford drives it to Hannaford's and puts it, uh, I think, out back with their other recycling. My theory on that is it's great that that's happening, but I don't think that Hannaford's uh, in New Hampshire should be responsible for recycling Vermonters plastic film but mm. it's great that it's happening on that small scale. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I'll read the next question here. Ham, as the Coventry landfill gets ever closer to full, is our state government getting closer to starting a waste reduction campaign? Is there any other way around it? That sounds like it was from Diane Folds. <laughs> She's shaking her head. No, you sent me that article, Diane. Um, uh, there was just, and that was in VT Digger, I think. Yes. Yep. Okay. And I don't remember the date on, but I just read that article this morning. Um, yeah, there, 
Coventry is it. And they can only expand one more time, build cells one more time. Supposedly the Lebanon landfill has room for, don't quote me on this, 30 more years. Uh, it's a huge problem. And yes, the state of Vermont is doing a lot. They could do more, but everything we do in terms of um, finding one more thing that can be recyclable and doesn't have to go in the landfill. Uh, food scraps is a big one. Um, you know, every time you throw your food scraps in your trash, it's going to the landfill, doesn't need to, space you're using up in the landfill, same with styrofoam. Um, so yes, the state is working on it. Everybody's very aware of it. Uh, it costs millions of dollars to build a new landfill and obviously nobody wants one in their backyard. So I think at some point we're gonna, in the not too distant future, we're gonna be having to ship our trash out of state. And so New York or New Jersey or Utah or whatever, or Ohio is gonna end up with our trash because we're, we're producing so much of it. Thank you. Uh, and one more sort of observation on, on the plastic film. It says, and the plastic film air pillow from packaging also can go the same place as plastic film bags. Um, the next question is, I, I still save dead alkaline batteries, even though Lebanon says I can put them in the landfill. I would appreciate your thoughts on what's best for me to do with these, i.e. find a place that recycles them or landfill them, besides no longer using them. Wow. Um, there is no battery, there's no ban on battery, throwing batteries in the trash in New Hampshire. So if you live in New Hampshire and you wanna recycle your batteries, you can take them to, I think Home Depot, uh, possibly uh, Staples, possibly Best Buy. Again, if you're there, ask them. But in Vermont, um, we, we need to keep all of our batteries out of the landfill. It's not mandated, but um, we have a way to recycle all batteries. And you can take your batteries um, to, if you're tr a lot of transfer stations collect them and uh, Hartford takes them. Um, even Able Waste who runs Fast Trash in Bridgewater and Heartland will take batteries. I know because I collect them in five gallon buckets and sort through them and ship them. The company is called Call to Recycle another really cool company. Uh, if you want to check and see, they have a locator on, uh, on their website. You put in your, your uh, zip code and it'll show you where, where the closest place is. But ba alkaline batteries absolutely do not throw them uh, in the landfill. There's, New Hampshire is so backward in that regard. Um, and recycle them. Great, thank you. Uh, next question. I want to know what to do with small appliances like electric shaver, back massager, et cetera. I couldn't find any place that takes those. Uh, again, um, I would try bringing them to one of our electronics collections. Um, you can also, if you wanna find a de definitive answer, the company that picks up all of our electronics at these collections is called uh, Good Point Recycling. They're based in Middlebury. Great company. Um, again, email them, call them, go on their website and ask them about those small things. I mean, when I, I'm, when I do these Saturday recycling collections, people bring in all manner of hair dryers and stuff and, and uh, good point takes it all. And I think they do a really good job about breaking the stuff down and recycling the plastic. But um, it's, those are definitely not covered for the, uh, as far as the state is concerned. Thank you. Uh, comment, Price Chopper also has a bin for plastic bags. They are also used for Trex decking, which is all made from recycled plastic. 
Yes. Uh, question, are the fees for non-covered items consistent from transfer station to transfer station? No. They're not very much. I think they charge by the pound. They charge like 15 cents a pound or something like that. But no, they're, um, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say what they are because I don't know, but they they vary they vary quite a bit. Okay. Not consistent. Thank you. Um, someone's commenting here that there's a state program in Vermont to collect alkaline batteries, and a few places open to the public. In Williston, Shaw's and Hanford's have bins for the plastic bags. Um, okay. Maple syrup tapping lines and taps. I've seen a once a year collection, but can't remember where and when. Does anyone know about this? I do. Michael does. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, you were there. Um, so far, there is one. Um, it is in South Woodstock at the fire station, the first Saturday in May. And it's in South Woodstock because Mary McQuaig of Top Acres Farm in South Woodstock uh, is on the um, Windsor County Maple Producers Association. I think she may even be the president. And um, I think that's one of the reasons that it's in South Woodstock. Um, but we, we just did our second one this past November. We collected, I uh, filled a 40 yard roll off container Amazing. with tubing and spigot and, and spouts. Um, there is There are restrictions in terms of you have to put your, um, some of the older lines and spig and spouts are made of a different kind of plastic, which are not recyclable. So uh, I am not going to get into um, what they take and what they don't. But if you, I think if you Google the Addison County Solid Waste District, they have a whole page about maple syrup lines and taps and tell you how to test whether yours is recyclable. But yes, stay tuned. Uh, I post it on all the listservs and as many places as you can. We, as far as I know, we'll be doing another one first Saturday in November. And we and also include it in Sustainable Woodstock's newsletter with like several months out and just keep reiterating it. So keep your eye on our newsletter. If you don't get our newsletter, please email me at director at sustainablewoodstock.org and I'd be glad to add you to it. Right, thank you for that. I just wanna quickly call out, it is 6.30. Are you okay to keep answering questions, Ham, or do you need to head off? You can, it's okay if you can't stay. I'll go on all night. Oh, yay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I don't know whose turn it is, Michael, but the next question is one that I actually posted, so I'll read it. Um, Darn Tough mailed me socks in a black plastic bag, and on the bag it said it was backyard compostable. I didn't, should I trust it? Do you know? Uh, no. Well, <laughs> that's, that's terrible of me to say. Um, try it, you know, try one and see if it composts. And if it doesn't, call them and tell them. But it sounds to me, like if it's if it's compostable plastic, it might compost in a commercial facility, but not in backyard. But I don't want to say that they're, you know, I don't want to say that that's a disc, um, that it's false advertising because it might have, it might work, it might work. Maybe I'll try it. Okay. Thank yeah, you. try it. So uh, Sandy mentions that South Woodstock, the South Woodstock Firehouse had the. Uh, Maple syrup tubing recycling November 6th this past year. She just wanted to mention that. Um, yep. And it does cost. It is, um, there, is a, there is a fee per, um, I think it's by weight, just so you know, it's, it's not free, but it's pretty darn uh, reasonable. Mm -hmm. So the next question, it says HW sustainable is EPR question mark AL. So can you stress how polluting plastic, the making and the plastic containers are even if they are recycled? Not really sure what um, certain kind of. 
Is that a certain uh, kind of plastic? How, uh, how sustainable is EPR and question mark AL? So can you stress how polluting plastic, the making and the plastic containers are, even if they're recycled? Sounds like the pollution of the yeah. plastic making process itself. Yeah, that, maybe that's what the question is getting at. Um, yeah, um, if that's the case, um, yes, the whole plastics from start to finish are, um, you know, they're, they're, they're plastics are made of petroleum. Uh, is there the extraction of petroleum? Uh, the processing facility, it's, I'm sure there are, you know, scrubbers and all the rest, but it's, it's, it's you know, all along the line. It's, it's, it's um, not a great thing. It's absolutely essential to our lives. Um, and it, it's, you've all seen pictures of plastic ending up in the water and in wrapped around turtles' heads and the rest of it. So um, I would say it's a nasty, but uh, uh, unfortunate, but absolutely necessary material in our lives. Not a very good answer. If you want more clarification, email me or call me. Thank you. How do we handle glass bottles that have small plastic pourable inserts that are almost impossible to remove like soy bottles, I guess, soy sauce bottles? Um, if you can't get them out, I would just um, put them in your recycling. They're gonna get crushed and the plastic will undoubtedly be removed. Next question is, do we um, need to buy our dairy products in glass? No? Yes? Uh, if you want to avoid using non-recyclable container, you know, buying it in a non-recyclable container, yeah, it's a great idea. Um, it's more expensive. Judy Lowell is raising her hand. Oh, you're waving. Okay, sorry, I thought you had a, thought you had a, uh, something you wanted to say. Um, yeah, you know, glass is, is preferable, um, even for storing food in terms, uh, as opposed to putting it in, in, in plastic. Uh, it's, it's more expensive. You know, if you buy your McNamara milk, um, you do get a deposit back on your bottle, but, um, yeah, a simple answer is yes. If you can buy your uh, your liquids in in glass, do it. Thank you. I'm skipping over comments just given time. I'm going to questions. Um, as far as I could tell, Arc in Barrie does not allow people outside of their district to bring stuff. That is not true. Uh, I've called and asked them several times about that, and. Uh, there may be a restriction on that um, due to COVID or lack of help, but I was just up there before Christmas and um, they said they, I talked to the manager of the facility and he said, absolutely. Um, call them, you know, before you drive up there with a load of stuff, call them or email them and just double check. But as far as I know, they're open to the public. Uh, so the next actual question, there's a lot of comments, which are really great that everyone's sending these, a lot of comments about where things can go. Um, but the next question is, what is the ratio of brown to green when composting? Three to one. One, uh, one bucket of food scraps, three buckets of brown, of carbon. Great, thank you. Um, <clears throat> this question is, what about paper labels that are on clean and dry plastic bags? Remove them. Hmm. Next one is, so where should bubble wrap go? To the moon. Um, no. Um, <laughs> I think they already Reuse it. You know, a lot of people, I'm, I'm on every listserv for every GUV town, and I, read, I scan the listservs every day to see if I see the word recycling or whatever. Um, uh, listservs are terrific places to, to 
move stuff along. And I all the time I see people who either want packing material or want to get rid of packing material. So try that. Um, other than that, check out the Trex website and see if they take it and then take it, try taking it to Hannaford's or your grocery store and asking somebody like the manager uh, if they will accept that stuff. And someone's calling out that Tip Top Pottery apparently took bubble wrap and newspaper in packing material. That Excellent. They had. So that's an idea. Pottery place will probably need it. Thank you for that, Chip. Um, am I missing any other questions, Michael? I'm just looking. No, mostly um, just observations about different things. Yeah, yeah, thank you all for these comments. It's really great yeah. to see people going back and forth and sharing resources. Okay. Wow, that was a lightning round, Ham. Um. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I hope you were gonna, I'm gonna be able to see all these comments and questions. Yeah, I can um, send them to you afterwards. Yeah, great, that's great. Um, one thing I wanted to, I made a note, um, when COVID is over, I would like to organize, one of the many things I wanna do is to organize a repair cafe. I don't know if you've ever heard of one of those, but I went to one in Montpelier. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a bunch of volunteers who know how to fix things or sew things or put zippers in or fix a lamp and you have people bring in something that's broken. This is a way, again, to keep things out of the landfill. And then um, it goes on for three or four hours. People come by, they get their things repaired. Uh, they meet people, blah, 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 blah. All, you know, woodworkers, furniture makers, whatever. But I would like to do one of these it's in the very early stages. Obviously we can't do it right now, but if you or anybody you know has a talent, um, I would like to know about it. And I'm gonna keep a list of, um, of people and I will contact okay. you. And you can say that you never heard of me if you want, but I'm gonna contact you. Um, I can't fix anything. And so I have such an appreciation for people who can, and I am bound and determined to do one of these. So again, I'm just putting that out there. Um, let me know if you'd like to be contacted. Do you have a site in mind yet, Ham? No, um, it's, it's gotta be somewhere, you know, it, I, the one I went to was in a church basement. Um, so, you know, a community center, um an empty storefront um lots of great places in windsor maybe i'll have the first one in windsor can you put on my list forever yes yeah, so. thing here um sustainable and, woodstock would love yeah. to partner with you and i'll that, take so. any ideas you have yeah great um great. I, I can restore antique lamps but i don't think that counts it absolutely does michael <laughs> you're on my list that's my weird hobby <laughs> <laughs> well we cannot thank you enough ham and thank you so much for staying yeah, um thanks. staying after the time lots of people are thinking in the chat i'll send it to you afterwards anyway um but i think we all learned a lot we yeah. could do another one anytime thank you all so much for coming be safe and uh happy recycling <laughs>